Herman, in his Tales of a Wayside Inn, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said, Being all fashioned of the selfsame dust, let us be merciful as well as just. <laughs> That's good advice, isn't it? Since we're all framed from the same dust of the ground, since we're all sinners in the eyes of God, how merciful should we be with one another? But for God, everything is different. We're created from dust. He is the creator. We are sinful. He is holy. We need to be treated with mercy. But does he need to treat us with mercy? Well, folks, there's no better place to see the Father's mercy than Calvary. There's no better time to see his mercy than the crucifixion. There's no better person through whom to see the Father's mercy than the Savior. Mercy has many facets, but surely withholding the penalty that we deserve for our sins is one facet of God's mercy. It's interesting that God's mercy is usually linked with his love and grace. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. Mercy, love, and grace. These three met one day at a place called... Calvary. It was the grace of God that enabled him to forbear the cruelty that Jesus had to endure. It was the love of God that put his son there in the first place. But it was the mercy of God that withheld from us what we deserved and laid it all on the back of the Savior. Now today in the broadcast, we want to see the mercy of God through the cross. It's here that we can truly see what God withheld from us. For what he withheld from you and me, he placed on our substitute, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's begin today by seeing that the Father withheld pain from us, and he put it upon the Lord Jesus. Go back with me to that day of Calvary. Try to put yourself in the position of Jesus. He was innocent. He had done nothing wrong. Now, many suspected it that day, but the father knew it. Pilate's wife was warned in a dream, and she counseled her husband to have nothing to do with that just man. Matthew 27, verse 19. And in the process of Jesus' trial, Pilate questioned the Savior's guilt. When the crowd clamored, crucify him, crucify him. Three times Pilate questioned, why? What evil has he done? I find no reason for death in him. Now you can find those three times in Luke 23, verse 4, verse 14, and verse 22. Finally, in frustration, you remember that Pilate delivered Jesus to the crowd with this disclaimer. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Matthew 27, 24. While hanging on Calvary's cross... Two others testified to Jesus' innocence. One of the malefactors said to the other in repentance, We receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And after Jesus drew his last breath, the centurion standing near him admitted, Truly this man was the Son of God. Mark chapter 15 verse 39. Although he was entirely innocent, nevertheless, the Savior endured the pain that was meant for you and me. The pain Jesus suffered that day was as varied as it was great. Think about all the things he went through. Think about all that the Father in his mercy withheld from you and me. There was the pain of being bound and led away from the Garden of Gethsemane. There was the pain of being struck by the high priest's officer, and then by others, and finally by the Roman soldiers. There was the pain of being bound as he was led from one trial to another. There was the pain of being scourged. There was the pain of that crown of thorns, twisted and then embedded into his brow. 
There was the pain of having to bear the heavy load of his cross through the streets of Jerusalem for all to see. And all of this pain Jesus had to endure before he arrived at Calvary. All of this pain the Father withheld from us and laid on his sinless Son. And once arriving at Calvary, the real pain began. Jesus was crucified. The famous Greek orator Demosthenes called crucifixion the worst form of execution. And Josephus, the Jewish historian, describes crucifixion as the most wretched of deaths. The pain of crucifixion should have been ours because the penalty for sin was ours. But the Father sent his Son to be crucified in our place. He placed the pain of this most wretched of deaths on his Son, and he did it in mercy toward us. Listen to John's account of the crucifixion. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the center. At that place outside the city, a place that resembled the face of a skull, a place called Golgotha in Hebrew, a place called Calvary in Latin, there they crucified the Lord Jesus. There they crucified him in your place. Ah, the Don Wurtzen song says it so beautifully. It was for you the Savior died. For you his precious blood flowed from his side. You see, folks, all the pain that should have been mine, God in his mercy withheld from me. All the suffering that I should have endured for my sin, God in his mercy withheld from me. The cross gives me the best glimpse of the mercy of God possible. Seeing the Father through the cross helps us to see the tender mercy of God. But you know, as you and I look at the crucifixion story, pain is not the only thing God withheld from us that crucifixion day. He also withheld the shame of our sin. Read again those accounts of the cruel mocking our Lord endured at his trial and the cruel mocking he endured at his crucifixion. It must have been intense. He was fiercely taunted as well as tortured. Now everybody got their licks in that day. The chief priests and their underlings mocked Jesus. They blindfolded him. They slapped him in the face and then they jested, Prophesy, who is it who struck you? Luke 22, verse 64. The Bible says they spoke many other blasphemous things to him as well. Herod arrayed Jesus with a gorgeous robe, and then his military men and he treated Jesus with contempt and mocked him. Luke chapter 23, verse 11. The Roman soldiers had great fun at the expense of our Savior. Matthew records that they put a scarlet robe on Jesus. They crowned him with thorns, and they put a reed in his hand, all in mocking his kingship. They bowed before him, feigning servitude, and they said with cynicism, Hail, King of the Jews! And then they took off Jesus' scarlet robe, and they put his own clothes back on him, and they led him away to be crucified. When Jesus arrived at Calvary, the crowd jeered, Aha! You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Mark 15, verses 29 and 30. What a horrible day that must have been. The shame of the cross, all this taunting and jeering, all this jesting at the Lord Jesus. The chief priests chimed in. He saved others, himself he cannot save. Matthew 27, verse 44, says that even the robbers taunted the Savior. 
Now, if you've done any reading about crucifixion, you know, folks, that crucifixion was the most ignominious form of death known to man. There was greater shame with crucifixion than any other kind of death. The Jewish view of crucifixion is well known to us. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. We first learned that in Deuteronomy 21, but it's repeated in Galatians 3.13. The ancient Greeks and Roman writers described the cross as the infamous stake. Sometimes they called it the criminal wood. You see, to be crucified meant to endure the most shameful of deaths. And that shame, like the pain, was meant for you and me. But in his mercy, God withheld that shame from us. It was for the joy that was set before him, the joy of saving us from the penalty of our sin, that Jesus endured the cross, though he despised the shame. Now look again today at the pain and the shame of the cross, and you'll see the Father's mercy. For it was the Father who sent the Son to endure all these things for you and me. Ah, but there's more that the Father withheld in his mercy. Not only pain and shame, as intense as the pain must have been and as dishonorable as the shame must have been, but the Father also withheld something much greater from us in His mercy. He placed on His innocent Son the penalty for our sin, and He withheld that from you and from me as well. That's what Christ was doing at Calvary. He was paying the debt for our sin. Penalty is the punishment that God imposes on people who sin. And since we're all sinners, Romans 3.23, we're all under the penalty of sin. Do you know what that penalty is? Romans 6.23 says the penalty of sin, the wages of sin, is death. You and I deserve to die in every way possible. We deserve to die physically and eternally. And spiritually, we deserve to die because of our sin. That's the wage that sin pays. And God could not just look the other way. He could not just pretend that you and I had not sinned. He could not just excuse the penalty for our sin. It had to be paid. Ah, but folks, nothing stopped the Father from paying the penalty himself. And this is what Jesus accomplished on the cross. In his infinite mercy, God placed the penalty for our sin on his dear son. Jesus' death paid the penalty for our sin. God withheld from us the penalty and placed it on his own sinless son. Now listen to this. It's Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It is a very, very important verse. For he that's God the Father, made him, that's God the Son, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Listen to the words of the Apostle Peter. Speaking of Jesus, he says, who committed no sin, nor was guile found in his mouth, who when he reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 22 through 24. You know, the best view that you and I get of the mercy of God is the view that takes you on the road to Calvary. If you want to see the Father and see what God withheld from you, what rightfully belonged to you, but what the Father placed on His Son, Jesus Christ. If you want to see God that way, you must view Him enduring the pain, suffering the shame, and bearing the penalty for your sin on the cross of Calvary. God placed on Jesus the punishment that belongs to you and me, such is the mercy of God, withholding from us what belongs to us. You know, the little song is right. Oh, how he loves you and me.